So with halogenation, you have the option, uh, instead of using an inert solvent, you can use water here. And water's going part to participate in the reaction here. So you're still going to form this bromonium ion, and you're still going to form a bromide ion off here. So it turns out bromide's even a better nucleophile than water, but whereas there's one bromide ion you formed, uh, your solvent's water, and it's chock full of water molecules. And so water, just being there's such a much greater concentration, get a chance to attack that more substituted carbon of the halonium ion here uh, instead of bromide. And as a result, so we're now going to attach a water molecule over here. And the bromine will still be attached on the less substitute of the carbons. All right, and in this case, you never want to end a reaction, as you might recall, with three bonds to an oxygen and a positive charge. That thing is highly acidic. And whatever your solvent is, in this case water, it's going to come and deprotonate that little proton transfer reaction to finish this off. And so your product here is what we call a halohydrin, where you have a halogen on one carbon and a hydroxyl group on the adjacent carbon. So, and specifically, we form two chiral centers here, so we should realize this is an anti-addition. So if that guy's a wedge, then your OH would be on the dashed position. So, or you could do the opposite. One way of showing the opposite, if there are enantiomers here, is just write the simple plus minus. And that just means invert all the chiral centers here. So we could have the bromine on the dash and the OH on the wedge, and that's what this kind of plus minus means. It means this compound and its enantiomer. So kind of shorthand you might see, you might draw them both out. If your professor has a, a preference, you should obviously go with their preference. Um, cool, this thing's called a halohydrin again, and that's our product. So, and, and just like with water here, you can also do this in the presence of alcohol. So, and again, you're going to form your bromonium ion and uh, a bromide ion, but that bromide's never going to get a chance to attack because there's only one of him, and there are millions and zillions of alcohol molecules being the solvent, and it'll attack to the more substitute side. So, and in similar fashion, you're going to form... So bromine will still be on the left substitute side. Let's draw that B a little better. So, and then you'll have now an ethanol attached, and I'll just write it as ETOH with a plus charge. And in similar fashion, I won't show the mechanism here, but also that's going to get deprotonated by another solvent molecule. In this case, you draw another ethanol molecule, not water. So to deprotonate, do that proton transfer. So, and in this case, we're going to end up with bromine on a wedge, OET on the dash, and then that methyl group on the wedge as well. So this is again an anti-addition. Those were chiral centers, why we gotta kinda worry about this. We'd form two chiral centers and we'd form this guy and his enantiomer. Again, another shorthand way of showing that. So halohydrin formation, or at least the analogous reaction when you use alcohol instead of water. So if you do bromination, you're gonna get a bromonium ion every time, so no carbocation rearrangements. It's because you formed a three-membered ring, it's always gonna be an anti-addition. The question is, what did you use as a solvent? If you use uh, an inert solvent, CCL4 or dichloromethane, Great, you had two bromines, but if you use water or alcohol, the water or the alcohol will end up attaching to that more substituted side. 